Welcome to the Curve 2 screencast. My name is Steve Upton from Chromix. I'm a co-developer of Curve 2 along with Don Hutchison. Curve 2 is the next version of Idealink Curve, the leading software for implementing the G7 calibration method on presses and other printing systems. I'm going to spend the next several minutes showing the features and benefits of Curve 2. Okay, so let's get underway. Um, I've shared my desktop here, and those of you who know me where will realize that this is not my desktop. <laughs> Way too clean to possibly be my desktop, but nonetheless. I wanted to talk about Curve 2 relative to Curve 1, because there were some significant changes between Curve 2 and to Curve 1. Uh, the primary one, at least from a user interface point of view, is that we, we, we rebuilt the user interface, and basically Curve 1 allowed you to have one file for one session. So if you did a print run, I should say one file for one run. If you did a print run, you would have opened a single file, a document in Curve 1, loaded all the measurements in, and built curves, that sort of stuff. And then when you had the results from that, when you had some measurements from, from run 2, uh, you'd have to open up a new document. And Curve had no idea what the connection was between those two documents. And if you wanted to use the calculations of round two in round one, it was difficult to do. You could do the delta setting in round two, but the numbers you got, while helpful, weren't actually as accurate as they should be in order to tweak the round one curves. There were no comparison capabilities between the, the rounds, which is important. If second runs densities are significantly different than the first, then you should be, you know, we should be aware of that because we had a number of tech support problems and other issues stemming from people thinking that curve was the problem when in fact the densities of the second run were significantly different than the densities of the first run, solid ink densities. So with curve two, what we decided to do was build what you might call a super document. And so this document actually holds multiple runs inside one single document. Uh, it helps organize things, as you can imagine, but also it helps you compare uh, the two, or multiple runs, I should say, and also um, aids in the calculations from run to run to run and allows you to do iterative tuning of your system. So, the, and we've moved a few things around. Some of them will probably seem familiar. Uh, like, for instance, this setup screen, the company operator, that sort of stuff, you know, I'm just going to say after the soda, Jones Printing or something. No matter what name I choose here, someone will probably be using it, so I apologize in advance. Let's say Bob Jones is the operator. Now, we can fill out all the additional information, but you can fill out this sort of stuff. This kind of information here is mostly for your documentation purposes, but it does appear in the reports, and the reports have been improved significantly. So you may be you know, more likely to use the reports, print them, that sort of stuff. So having this information on hand is handy. In the setup area up top here, there's basically two main ways that Curve can calculate curves. The G7 method, which was used in Curve 1, and now the TVI method, which is really the, the method that has been traditionally used in ISO uh, style workflows uh, and calibrations. Uh, we, we've had some questions about why we included TVI in a G7 curve program, and we decided that it doesn't have to be exclusively a G7 curve program. Uh, having TVI in the software um, was not that difficult to add. TVI is significantly easier to calculate. Uh, and also, it's a point of contrast. If people want to use it, they can discover why G7 is that much better, <laughs> as we believe. But sometimes you really want to use TVI, so we put it in there. The measured box here is an important one that we found there's a little bit of confusion about. If your RIP doesn't take values that, that are wanted, like for instance, if at 50% you want cyan to be 55, you'd type in 55. If your RIP doesn't do that, but only allows you to put in measured values, then Curve can do a little prestidigitation, invert the curves, and give you the numbers as if they were measured. And so as the as the source curve, right, the, the curve shape that you're trying to hit, you choose a flat curve line. And um, then when you select measured, you type in the numbers and your RIP is happy with it. So this will save some people a lot of work. That's basically what it comes down to. So uh, the setup, the other thing you might select here is a target color space. 
Um, right at the moment, Curve comes with uh, Grackle 1 and Swap 3 and Swap 5 built in, but you can simply put a folder in the same folder as, your, as the Curve application, and you can dump any CGATS file you want in there, any text file, for FOGRA or any internal color standard, and it will load it in here. And these color numbers are basically used whenever you're trying to hit some sort of color numbers. So I'm going to leave it at Grackle for the moment. Uh, so the next stage is the ink test. Now the ink test here uh, is really a simplified test. It's not intended as some big complex tool. It's just a quick way for you to find out how your ink colors are doing. So this is pre-G7 sort of stuff. Before you go on press, before you do your run, you're, maybe you're trying to hit some sort of color, like Grackle 2006, for instance. You can drop a color file in here, and it'll give you a good idea of what's going on. Now, um, uh, the ink test area, you can put samples in here. They do not need to be a P2P target. They can be just about anything that you might load in. So, for instance, um, let's see. I think I have an IT8 I can drop in here or something. Let's see. Yeah. So there's an IT8. So if you have something from a previous run or a press bar, uh, you know, a bar from the press or something, you can just drop it in there, and it'll give you an idea of how you're doing from a color point of view with your inks. Uh, it'll give you density, so Curve now calculates status T density, uh, as well as the delta E values here relative to the color that you've chosen. Now, if you want to choose swap three to compare, you can do that in your delta E calculations and change, that sort of stuff. So we leave the ability to compare to different things here, even though you may have chosen Grackle in the setup as your primary target. You can flip between them and do stuff like that. So you will see that your graph here, the, the, the spider graph has changed and been updated a fair amount. The primary thing that you'll notice are these little targets that show up here. And these are based on delta E. So um, the green area is what you're hoping for. The yellow is what you might consider a warning area. And anything outside of that is not good. Now, if I had something, I've, I've dropped in a P to P25 here. It's based on the Grackle data set. So you can see this is what it looks like when it's absolutely perfect. You know, the dots hit directly on. You can set these values. So these delta E values here. Uh, if you go under Preferences, and I urge you to go into Preferences and explore a little bit. There's not a lot, but it's worth doing. You can set the, the, the warning level, basically the, the boundary of the yellow area to 2.5 or whatever, and critical to 5. Um, that allows you to set the size of those and basically set up your tolerances. At the moment, uh, these are all done in Delta E76 calculations. Now, another thing I can do is, now that I have this open, I can say reports prepared by. I'm going to type my name in here. And that will show up later when, when we do some reports. So I'll say close. So this, again, it's really just a quick check to see how well you're doing from a paper point of view, from a Delta E point of view, etc. Okay. Not particularly complicated, and it doesn't average them. You just click on one list or the other, and it go, or you know one measurement sample set or the other, and it, it moves between them. Are there any questions so far? Well, the paper white in the IT8 is not zero zero. The paper white is uh, whatever it is. It doesn't have it listed here, but the paper white in that particular IT8 is going to be a uh, you know positive A. I don't know how much, and and negative B. I don't know, seven or something. It's fairly blue paper. I think this is from an inkjet proofer, which is part of the reason it looks so whacked in like the green and the <laughs> and the blue. Oh, measurement. Right. Um, you cannot measure directly in the curve at this time. Uh, we import the uh, the um, CGATS, you know, sort of standard CGATS text files from Colorport, Measure Tool, or any other tool, usually that will export a standard CGATS text file. Okay. So um, let's move on to the next test. The, the main thing here, people say, well, why do you have this? Well, one of the reasons is it's simple, but it accepts any P2P, sorry, any, any non-P2P target. So I can drop a P2P in there, or if I just have like a ISO proof strip here, you know, this is a standard, the, the little ISO 54 patch strip. Um, basically, you can drop just about anything in here. It makes life easier. And the same thing happens down in the G7 verify stage. So.